Well, praise the Lord. Greetings to everyone. So glad to be a part of your day. Bring the Word of God. I hope that we are somehow blessed. And we pray God's blessing on your life. We have several messages and songs. I trust you'll listen to all of them. We want to speak today. Our title is Not Going Far Enough. Not Going Far Enough. Now, we're looking in Exodus. We want to read 16 and 1. It's talking about the children of Israel as they came across the Red Sea and they're following Moses. Now they're going to the promised land. God had promised them. And it wasn't that far. Short journey across the Red Sea and up to Canaan land. But they found problems along the road, along the way, to be intolerable. One time they uh, didn't have any water to drink. Then it said they, they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. So uh, I'm bringing out the part where Miracles had just happened. You're talking about the 15th day of the second month from the time they walked through the sea with the water divided. And God had also before that provided water for them. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Well, he says... And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died in the land of the Lord, in the land, died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for we had, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And so they complained and murmured. There was over a million of them. And so I'm sure it was a very, very challenging time for Moses and Aaron. And uh, the problem, of course, was they hadn't gone far enough. They were complaining too soon. They hadn't gone far enough. That's like, for instance, a lot of people, whenever they... Uh, go to church and they sit and listen to the word and uh, then they don't go back. They wonder why their family are lost and why they die and go to a tormenting hell. Well, the reason's because they didn't go far enough. They should have went on and sought God and, and followed His word. And uh, just like the children of Israel here, how that they was on a short part of the journey and already complaining. Don't you know God knew their need? Yes. God was testing them, of course, yes. to see how they would respond in hard times. Yes. Now we see people today and we learn about them who have been redeemed from the Mormons and their doctrine, and from Catholicism and the Catholic doctrine, and from Church of Christ and their doctrine, and from Islam and their doctrine. But what we've noticed, most of these people, once they have been delivered and they've left those churches and those movements, they right away get caught up into some denominal church <coughs> in the triune God yeah. organization in the world. Yeah. And that's where they stay. And all of a sudden, people that's been a Catholic and come out and felt free started going 
going to a, a Baptist church or a, a Pentecostal Trinity church and they feel all oh, God has brought us out, little do they know they haven't gone far enough. They haven't gone far enough. Many of them get discouraged and quit, and the whole family quits going to church. And they wonder what happened. They didn't go far enough. They didn't seek for God until they found the truth about the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues like in the book of Acts. In the first and second chapter, they... They didn't go far enough that they could feel the power of God in their bodies. When Jesus told the people to go to Jerusalem and tarry until you're endured with power from on high, those people didn't know what was coming. They had no idea uh, what the experience they were going to experience meant. They went there through faith in God. All of a sudden, the power of God just fell on them. And it was real. It was so real that their body began to react in different ways. They laughed and some said they're drunk. They were joyful. They were happy beyond words. Words couldn't tell the love they were feeling. It was joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. And they felt the power of God. Yes. And they were all baptized in the name of Jesus. We see people and hear people come out of churches and all oh, we're so glad we're not in the Mormon movement anymore. They end up in some denominal church still following the Catholic doctrine of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptism and many other things like, for instance, the communion and the message of saved, always saved, and life without the Holy Ghost and real, real power in their heart. They don't know that we commune with God without a wafer. Without grape juice or wine, we commune with God through the Spirit. Yes, amen. Because He is our drink, our bread, our life. And if we was broke and didn't have a dime, the people that are street people that live on the sides of the road, if they had God like they should. They could have communion with Him without a fang in their hand. All they have to do is talk to Him and they're communing with Him yes, amen. through the Spirit. Yes, amen. amen. Oh. The Church of Christ teaches that if you don't take communion, you're not a part of His body. And that that little wafer is His body when they take it, His blood when they drink the juice. They haven't gone far enough. They haven't seen the spiritual application. And they also follow the Catholic doctrine of baptism. Run away from Catholics and Mormons and all the tribes if you want, but don't stop before you get into the truth. Amen. The real truth of God that can be found in the book of Acts 1 and 2 through chapter 10. Find out what God's doing. Now in 2 Samuel, the third chapter and the 33rd verse, we find where Abner was the general. He was the very top army commander for Saul. And Joab was the same position, but he was for David. And all down through there, these two men battled back and forth. In the process of time, Saul had killed Joab's brother, 
Not that he wanted to, but his brother wouldn't turn back. He had no choice. The Bible clearly tells the story. So then, uh, by and by, Abner sees that uh, God is turning the kingdom to David, and he's going to leave Saul, and he's going to bring all the army and everyone that follows him to David. And it said that Abner had communicated with the elders of Israel, saying, you sought for David in times past to be the king over you. Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines and out of the hands of all their enemies. And Abner said unto David, I will rise, arise and go and will gather all Israel unto my Lord the king that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all thy heart's desire. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And so David had made peace with Abner, because what he'd done under Saul wasn't his fault. He was a man under command. And now he's appeared to David and surrenders, and wants to bring all the Israel's all of Israel to David so he can be king over everything. But it says when Joab was come to out from David, he sent messengers after Abner and brought him again from the well of Sinar, but David knew it not. <clears throat> so all of these things that happened, Joab wasn't there. When he came, he learned of them and we find where Abner had just left. He sends people to get him and bring him back. When Abner was returned from Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Ashiel, his brother. So Joab was looking for revenge <coughs> and killed him. Now look what David said. <coughs> and the king lamented over Abner, or was sad and very crying and very sad. It says, and said, died Abner as a fool dieth. Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put in feathers. Now the moral of this story is this. Abner didn't go far enough. He turned around and went back. He was going. David had done sinning in peace. He was going to gather Israel. But he turns and comes back. A lot of people leave the Catholic Church and turn back into another denomination that teaches a big part of exactly what the Catholics are teaching. You don't know that the Catholics changed baptism. Not God. God never changed nothing that he told Peter in the book of Acts 1 and 2. God never changed nothing about the salvation plan. It was changed and there is written proof that it was changed by the Catholic Church in the 17th, 18th century to follow Solomon Holy Ghost. Taking the power of God away from baptism. How, Brother Bill? Because without the name of Jesus, there is no power. The power of God is in the name. Yes, amen. When Christ left and went into the heavens, he left his name with the church. His name has power. Yes, amen. And he said through Paul, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus. Yes. Word or deed. Baptism's deed. 
and you speak the words. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are titles. They're not names. The power of God had been lifted from the most important part of new Christians, which is remission and burial of their past sins. People leave the Mormons and all oh, they feel so free. I broke free. They end up in some Pentecostal triune church. And they're very happy there. They're very satisfied. Not only that, they'll defend their church. Not knowing that they haven't went far enough. There's only one church in one way. One, one, one. One way to God. He says in Matthew 7 and 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate. Do what? I'm talking about the only church on earth. Straight is the gate. Straight. Not any old way. There's not a dozen ways. Straight is the gate. Comes right out of the Word. It says, And now, straight is the gate, and now is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Is that in this book? Yes, it sure is. Yes, Matthew 7, 14. Look it up. Beware of false prophets. Now, we don't call them prophets today. We call them pastors. False teaching pastors. Prophets. Beware of false prophets which come into you in sheep's clothing. Oh, they look so nice, so kind, and they talk so smooth, and they know the right words. They can win you over. But inwardly, they are as ravenly wolves. Why? Because the message they carry is poison. Yes. You can't go halfway and find truth. You must go all the way. Yes. Look in this book for it. There's one way. He says... Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Now, he didn't say we have prophesied. He says, have we not? Yes. So it's a fact that they had prophesied. Have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. You see the triune movement in the world today? They're building, they're feeding, they're reaching out, they're gathering in, they're growing, they're growing, they're growing, they're prophesying. The triune God is growing in today's society. Oh yeah, God has allowed them to have power, to have uh, the ability to deceive. Now, you can't be deceived if you really want truth because you'll find it in the book. But many people won't take the book's word for itself. They'll go to their pastor, which you know good and well is going to tell you the wrong way. They tell you one thing and they go to the book and it's just the opposite. He says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, then in the 23rd verse, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Now how could that be? How could he never know them? Because sin will never enter into heaven. You've got your lifetime to get it right. And according to the book of Revelations, you can be right. But if you don't get 100% right on the plan of salvation, God will scratch your name out. He'll take your name out of the Lamb's book of life. 
You can't get into the Lamb's book of life unless you go through the Lamb. There's one, one, one way to God. Now in Ephesians 4 and 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called. Now this is the calling coming straight from Ephesians. There is one body and one spirit even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their own minds. Do you think it's a mystery to them. Don't you know that they know they're following the Catholicism doctrine? Sure they know. Sure they know. They've carved out an easier way so they can build a crowd. Look what Isaiah said. Isaiah 4 and 1 said, in that, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man and saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. But let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. No one man is referring to is Christ. We'll eat our own blood and we'll wear our burial. Just let us take on your name. They're hiding behind the name Christianity. I heard one man say, these singing groups always reaching out and asking for money but what they don't tell you, I'm quoting, what they don't tell you is they keep 20% of everything that comes in for themselves. Well, it's not just singing groups that does it. It's not just singing groups. This is a money-making machine. Religion is a business. Multi-billion dollar business. Some pastors own big flying jets. They have big castles. They own land. Hundreds and thousands of acres. Money came from people that needed it more than they did. It's going to be something standing at Judgment Day and watching what God does to them. He says, but ye have not so learned Christ. He's talking to the Jesus name people. We're no longer Christians. We're no longer religious. We are Jesus name followers. We're following the Lamb. But ye have not so learned Christ. We haven't learned to do that because it's crooked and wrong. If so be that ye have heard of Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one, one. The one church, the one God, the one rapture, the one eternity, the one new heaven and earth, the one body of Christ, the oneness in baptism, the oneness in the Holy Ghost power with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the oneness in the true power of God, oneness, Jesus' name, people. 